فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم أوصوا الله تبارك وتعالى يتوزع إذن القرآن ولقد آتينا موسى الكتاب وقفينا من بعده بالرسل وآتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس أفكلما جاءهم رسول بما لا تهوى أنفسهم استكبرتم ففريقا كذبتم وفريقا تقتلون Allah tells us here that whenever it came to them a prophet that their nafs was not inclined to it they didn't like it بما لا تهوى أنفسهم بما لا تهوى تهوى means what هوى their nafs was not inclined to this prophet استكبرتم they became arrogant and then look at Allah said after that ففريقا كذبتم a group disbelieved وفريقا تقتلون and another group you kill look how the desires makes them extreme by killing just by following their desires it made them kill a prophet of Allah so extremism can bring about killing sorry desires can bring about killing and that is also something if a person kills himself from he will not what so atheists say that religion is the source for what they say it's the source for extremism the truth of the matter is desires is la it's not religion binas al quran because the ones who were killing prophets had beliefs and have had religions and they believed in a religion or believed in something they were not atheists ba'd dhalik they were called killing their killing their prophets the reason why they were killing their prophets was not because of their religion they were killing them based on what they were based on killing them because of the desires The next thing that's a cure is coming back to the scholars, returning matters back to the scholars, especially when the matters are nawazil, when they are contemporary, safety, security related matters, and etc. As we know, Allah did not make the people the same. Allah did not make the people equal. Allah made people of different levels and different stations and different ranks. Allah says in an ayah in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Are they equal? The ones who know and the ones who don't know, are they equal? This is called istifham بِمَعْنَ الْإِنْكَارِ I'm a بِمَعْنَ النَّفِي, sorry. It is istifham بِمَعْنَ النَّفِي What does it mean? The ayah is, is an integ is it's in a integra interrogative form. It's in a questioning form. And sorry, it's in a questioning wording, but the intent behind it is negation. It's like Allah is saying, La yastawi alladina yalamun wa alladina la yalamun. They are not equal. The ones who know and the ones who don't know, they're not equal. So even though it's an istifham. It's an istifham which is inkari. Allah is negating subhanahu wa ta'ala that the one who knows and the one who doesn't know to be the same. So we see that the people are not the same. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says to us in the Quran, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah lifts the station and the rank of those who know from those who don't, Allah, sorry, Allah says, Allah lifts the station and the rank of the believers over the non-believers. And within the believers, Allah Taala He lifts the station of those who know and those of peop the people of knowledge. So the believers are greater than the disbelievers. But within the believers, the greatest of them is the ones who have, who have knowledge. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He commanded us and He told us to take matters back to them because of that station which they have and because of that virtue that they have one of the virtues that also come is that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as imam ahmad narrated in his musnad and al imam uh, ibn abdul bar he mentions it in his kitab uh, jami' bayan al ilm wa fadl and others that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said 
يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الدِّينَ مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَفٍ عُدُولُ That this religion, every generation and every time, the ones who are going to carry this knowledge is the reliable ones. In other words, the scholars, the Prophet are referred to them as a reliable. Are you with me? That they are what? Reliable. And this is a tazkiyah. Tazkiyah means a praise from Allah. You know when you want to go to university, you ask for a person to write you a praisal letter in order to take it to Medina University or to take it to this university because you need to get accepted, right? The ulama, they already have that from the Messenger والسلام, Because the Prophet said that they are what? Udul. يَنْفَوْنَ عَنْهُ التَّحْرِيفِ الْغَالِينَ وَانْتِحَالُ الْمُبْطِلِينَ وَتَأْوِيلُ الْجَاهِلِينَ Ibn Abdul Barr rahimahullah, he says that this this statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is that يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَفٍ عُدُولُهُ He said وَفِيهِ دَلَالَةٌ There's a clear-cut evidence in this hadith عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْعُلَمَاءِ عُدُولٌ That the scholars are reliable وَهُوَ الْأَصْلُ فِيهِمْ And that is the asl in them. So by default the scholar is reliable unless there's something that shows us he's not reliable. So anyone who says that scholar, this scholar is not reliable فَعَلَيْهِ بِالدَّلِيلِ The asl is that he is reliable. We're referring to the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. They're reliable by default. You want to remove him from this, you're now leaving the asl, the original state. It's upon you to bring an evidence where, you, where he isn't reliable and why we shouldn't take the matter back to him. Also, Allah wa ta'ala, my beloved brothers and sisters, took these people as a witness. When Allah wa ta'ala takes you as a witness and says, for instance, if a king today goes, he gets caught in a situation or the king has a situation where he, he wants to prove that he's innocent. For instance, an accusation is spread out against him or something. And the king comes out and he says to the people, I, I never did this. My witness, I, 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 my, my, my witness for this is Fulan ibn Fulan. Now the fact that he would use that person, that person can't be somebody in the eyes of the people who's weak, right? If that person was weak in the eyes of the people, the people would just look at the king and say, you're really going to use this person? The only reason why he would point at this person is because through this individual, he will get a lot of respect. Okay? Allah, wa ta'ala, well, the example on what I'm going to mention about Allah is not connected. Just wanted to show you, just using the example. For that, using a witness of somebody is because they're reliable and they're good. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, when it came to proving that he is the only one who deserves to be worshipped, he used witness for this. I have witnesses for this, he says. Shahid Allahu anna la ilaha illa huwa wal malaika wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil qist. Allah mentions that he first of all, Allah testifies that there is none worthy of worship except him. He says also what is a witness for this is that the eight angels. And also a witness for this is the what? The witness for this is also the ulama. Ibn al-Qayyim said that this ayah consists of, this ayah, it consists of al-shahada, al-shahid, and a mashhudin bi. Shahada, al-shahid, and a mashhudin bihi. And he expands on it in more in his kitab, Miftahu Dari Sa'ada. And this is the first evidence he uses. From, he brings 153 evidences. 153 virtues that the scholars have. The first one he started with is this evidence. Shahid Allahu Annahu La ilaha illahu. Allah used them and said they are witness. Why did Allah use them? Because they're reliable. They are what? They're reliable. Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, who is the teacher of Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he said, إِنَّ الْعَالِمَ بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَبَيْنَ خَلْقِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ كَيْفَ يَدْخُلُ عَلَيْهِمْ Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir said, إِنَّ الْعَالِمَ that the scholar is between Allah and the creation. فَلْيَنْظُرْ look at كَيْفَ يَدْخُلُ عَلَيْهِمْ how you enter onto him. Be careful when it comes to the matters of the scholars. 
they are between Allah and His creation. In other words, the people don't know Allah except through them. Sufyan ibn Uyayna is the student, he expands on what his teacher said even more. He says, أَعْظَمُ النَّاسِ مَنْزِلَةً مَنْ كَانَ بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَبَيْنَ خَلْقِهِ أَلَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْعُلَمَاءِ Sufyan ibn Uyayna said, أَعْظَمُ النَّاسِ The people who have the greatest station in the eyes of Allah is مَنْ كَانَ بَيْنَ اللَّهِ The one between Allah and His creation. And who are they? He said, الْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالْعُلَمَاءِ the, the prophets and the scholars. Remember the prophets are between, how would we, would you have known how to pray today without the prophets? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? Would you have known what Allah loves and what Allah hates without the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? The answer is no, you wouldn't have. But now, are you with me? The prophet is gone alayhi salatu wasalam. Who is taking his place? The prophet alayhi salam, he said, the previous nations, kullama mata nabiyun khalafa nabi. The previous nations, the previous nations, whenever a prophet died, Allah sent him another prophet, and then another prophet, and then another prophet. Except this nation. What's the difference with this nation? This nation, every time a prophet dies, Allah doesn't send another prophet. He sends ulama. Because Nabi Muhammad is the last prophet. So the scholars are the ones who are sitting in the places of the prophets that used to come. That's why the prophet said, إِنَّ الْعُلَمَاء وَرَثَتُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُوا دِرْحَمًا وَلَا دِينَارًا وَإِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَذٍ وَافِرٍ That the scholars are the inheritors of the Prophet and what they inherited from them is not dirham and or dinar, not money. وَإِنَّمَا وَرَّثُوا الْعِلْمِ What they inherited from them is what? Knowledge. And anyone who takes that knowledge has surely gained a great portion. So the ulama are between Allah and His creation. Through them we find out things. وَلِذَلِكَ السَّهْرِ بْنَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ تُسْتَرِي رَحِيمَ اللَّهِ He expanded on that statement of Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir and Sufyan ibn even more and he said مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مَجَالِسِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ Anyone who today wants to look at the gatherings of the Prophets, the sittings of the Prophets, anyone who wants, فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَى مَجَالِسِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Look at the gatherings of the scholars, the circles where they are teaching. That's exactly how the Prophet's gathering was. His companions would sit and he would educate them. If you go to the ulama circles, it's the same. Not demonstrations and rallies and protests. No, 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 no. The majalis al anbiya, he's saying, is the majalis al ulama, the masjids and the places of khair and ilm. That's where is the gatherings of the Prophets. Yaji'ur rajulu, a man comes. In the, look at the gatherings of the scholars and the gatherings of the Prophets. This is how they were. A man would come. فَيَقُولُ يَا فُلَانُ He will say to the scholar, or he will say to the prophet, or the scholar, يَا فُلَانُ إِشْ تَقُولُ فِي رَجُلٍ حَلَفَ عَلَى مْرَأَةِ بِكَدَى وَكَدَى A man who made an oath to his wife that he's going to do this, 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 this. In other words, if she does this, 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 that he's going to divorce her, and, he, and she does do it, what would happen? He said, طُلِّقَتْ She's divorced. A مرأة to his wife. وَيَجِيُ آخَرُ Another one comes. فَيَقُولُ He says, مَا تَقُولُ فِي رَجُلٍ حَلَفَ عَلَى مْرَأَةِ what do you say about a man who makes an oath to his wife in this, this, this matter? فَيَقُولُ Then the scholar would look and say, revise the issue and he would say, لا يحنث بهذا القول He would just have to do hanth of this matter. وَلَيْسَ هَذَا And Sahal ibn Abdullah Tustari said, No one has this rights. إِلَّا لِنَبِيٍ A prophet أَوْ لِعَالِمٍ A scholar فَعْرِفُوا لَهُمْ ذَلِكَ Recognize that, that for them. That he's able to say to a person that your marriage is saved and he can save it for him by his fatwa. Just like a prophet. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith which Imam Ahmed narrated in his Musnad, Albani considered it to be sahih, in his sahih targhib wa tarheeb, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي مَنْ لَمْ يُجِلَّ كَبِيرَنَا وَيَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَيَعْرِفْ لِعَالِمِنَا حَقَّهُ That the Prophet said he's not from amongst us. The one who doesn't honor his elder, who doesn't have mercy towards his younger, and does not recognize the rights of the scholar. The question arises that, what is the rights of the scholar? The rights is that you reference back matters to him. This is his deal, this is his job. From his rights is that you bring back to him the religion. And matters that are ambiguous and unclear is from the rights of the ulama. And it falls under this hadith. And it falls because Allah said in the Quran, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَا عُوبِهِ 
ولو ردوه إلى الرسول وإلى أولي الأمر منهم لعلمه الذين يستنبطونه منهم That if a matter of safety and a matter of fear comes they go and they spread it Allah says if only they were to bring it back to ولو ردوه إلى الرسول if only they brought it back to Allah and his messenger and then Allah goes on saying وأولي الأمر منهم the people who have authority over them the Mufassirin they mentioned that the Ulu Al-Amri Minhum is the what? The Ulama. If only they brought it back to the scholars and the people of knowledge. Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in his kitab Bin Hajj Sunan Nabawiyah, when he was talking about the difference between jihad and fitna, jihad which is jihad shar'i, and that fitna and the jihad that people would call it jihad, but it's a fitna, and when he was talking about Muqatalatu al bughat fighting with the rebellious, rebellious ones, and etc. When he was talking about that, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said something very powerful. He said, fil jumlati in conclusion. After he spoke about the whole topic and he put everything in place, pay attention, look what he said. fil jumlati in conclusion. فَالْبَحْثُ فِي هَذِهِ الدَّقَائِقِ Speaking about this detailed matter, this is a powerful statement. Ibn Taymiyyah says, fil jumlati After he spoke about all of the rulings pertaining to this issue, he says, فَالْبَحْثُ فِي هَذِهِ the research of this particular matter, this detailed matter, في هذه الدقائق من وظيفة خواص أهل العلم. It's only for the specialized scholars, خواص أهل العلم. The scholars and the ulama, they're the ones who talk about these matters pertaining to what is jihad and when should fight should happen and whatnot. الله أكبر. Not every single person who sees a matter to be in that particular way or he likes it. Anas ibn Malik narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the Prophet said, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْعُلَمَاءِ The Prophet said that the likes of the scholars is like, the scholars are like, فِي الْأَرْضِ on this earth كَمَثَلِ النُّجُومِ They are like stars. يُهْتَدَى بِهَا فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ Through them, people become guided on the earth and on the sea. فَإِذَا انْطَمَسَتِ النُّجُومِ If the stars, they switch, they're dark, pitch dark. The people become close to becoming misguided. They won't know where to go, what direction. They use the star to get to their destination. This statement, Imam Ahmad narrated it, Al-Haythami, it's weakened because of two narrators in there. One is Rashdeen ibn Sa'ad. Scholars have differed on him when it comes to using him as a proof. And also, Abu Hafs, who is the narrator from Anas ibn Malik, he's machhul, he's unknown. Either way, if the senad of the hadith, if the chain is weak, فَإِنَّ sahih. The meaning is correct. The scholars are like stars. And as we know through the Qur'an, the stars has three benefits for us. When we look at the Qur'an, the Qur'an shows us that the stars has three benefits for us. The first benefit that it has for us is that it is signs for us to become guided. The stars, through them, those who know it, know what direction to go. In the deserts, people use stars to know what direction to go. Allah mentions that in the Quran, Allah says signs and the stars <coughs> is what the people use to become guided. Guided in knowing what direction and what way to go. People in the... You guys don't know it, but the Bedouin people, if you go, I went there and visited, they know the Qibla through the stars. I'll tell you all that stuff, they, 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 know, they know their stuff. The second benefit that it has for you is what? It beautifies the sky. Allah mentions in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ Allah Taala He says, and we have beautified the sky with the stars. But it is majroor bil fathati li annahu li annahu is mamnu' min as-sarf. Mafa'ila, it comes in its form. So Allah tells us that it's a beauty for the sky. The third one is what? That it is, it is something Allah uses to shoot the shayateen with and to destroy them with. Was, uh, and that is what Allah says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُوبًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ We use them as shooting stars to destroy the shayateen. 
all three of those characteristics that are in the stars are in the scholars. Because that's not what the scholars are. The first one being that they are signs that people use to become guided. That's exactly the scholars. The scholars are the ones who guide the people to the straight path. The guiding here means what? Hidayatul dalalati wal irshad. The guiding, showing the people the straight path and bringing them to the correct path. This is exactly what the ulama do. Also, the scholars are zinatul ard. Like the sky, the stars are the zinatul sama. That they beautify the sama. The scholars, they beautify this earth. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he destroys people with the absence of the scholars. And we took that before. Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا نَأْتِي الْأَرْضَ نَنْقُصُّهَا مِنَ الطَّرَافِهَا Allah says, do you not see that we destroy the earth? Some scholars say the destruction of this earth means by the scholars going. And this is narrated from Mujahid ibn Jabrin. And it is also narrated from Qatada, which is مَوْتُ فُقَهَائِكُمْ وَعُلَبَائِكُمْ It's the dying of your scholars and your jurists. Also, we took the long hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. إن الله لا يقبض العلم انتزاعا ينتزع من صدور الرجال ولكن يقبض العلم بقبض العلماء حتى إذا لم يبق عالما اتخذ الناس رؤوس اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهالا فسئلوا فأفتوا بغير علم فضلوا وأضلوا فضلوا وأضلوا so the people become destroyed the death of the scholars the salaf they used to say موت العلماء the death of the scholars is it's a corruption and it's a harm we already took that before well, especially the statement of Maymun ibn Mihran, remember? Half ibn Hajj brings it in what? لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده شر منه And the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Half ibn Hajj brings it in Fatuh al-Bani when he explains that statement. So through the scholars, the earth is beautiful. Are you with me? ولذلك أبو داود السجستاني رحمه الله Are you with me, brothers? When the fitna happened, the fitna happened, at his time, there was a fitna hap that took place. It was known as the fitna, fitna to zinj. The leader of that time, he requested for Abu Dawood, the great scholar, the Sunan Sahib Sunan, the author of the Sunan, he requested for him to go to the land in which corruption and fitna was not ending. And what did he request for him to do? He said, please go to that land and Read your sunan there. Because the ulama, when they go to the land and they spread knowledge, Allah Tabarak wa Taala stops punishing those people. Allah Tabarak wa Taala, and I think this topic alone should this this point alone should be made into a topic. That Allah Tabarak wa Taala saves land. These are, there's a thar more than thirty statements from the salaf that the land is saved through the scholars. Inshallah ta'ala, this will be a lecture another time, inshallah. The third one is Rujuma Lish Shayateen. The stars are what? They are shooting stars that the stars are shot at the shayateen. Allah destroys them with it. Also, the scholars are like that. They are also Rujuma Lish Shayateen on this earth. Ahlul Bida'i, Wal Ahwa'i, Wal Dalalat, who speak about the religion without no knowledge. Who is the one who responds to them? Who is the one who destroys their shubah, their doubts that they put forward? Who is the one who gives response to it? Who is the one who purifies this religion? Who is it that Allah uses to cleanse his religion and protect his religion? It is through the what? The scholars. But whilst the scholars are alive, extremism doesn't take place in their gatherings. They're the ones who teach the people to come with moderation. Not to go extreme in exaggeration and extreme in negligence. ولذلك الإمام القرطبي رحمه الله وني كيم تدي آية فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا وني كيم تدت آية الإمام القرطبي هو يسد فلوي هو يسد فأمر الله تعالى برد المتنازع فيه إلى كتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم وليس لغير العلماء معرفة كيفية الرد إلى الكتاب والسنة ويدل هذا على صحته Qurtubi says, Allah commanded to take back the ones who are arguing their matters to the kitab and the sunnah. 
and he said that is not for anyone other than the scholars. Because the ones who are not scholars don't know how to take it back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. If you tell him to take it back to the Kitab and the Sunnah, what, how is he going to the istimbat of the hukum? And he says, what shows this is that because it is wajib to question and ask the scholars and to follow their verdicts. Also, Sahar ibn Abdullah at Tustari said, Qurtubi brings that statement of Sahar ibn Abdullah as well after that, that he said, The people are in good and they are in a state of stability. As long as they honor and they respect their scholars and their leaders. If they honor those two and respect them, Allah Taala will keep their worldly and their hereafter affairs intact. In other words, the leader destroys your dunya and the scholar destroys your hereafter. If you open your tongue against your leader, he will imprison you, right? And he will give you a hard life in this world. And if you say something about the ulama, you're going to destroy your hereafter. Allah is going to punish you for that and imprison you in, in his fire. وَإِذَا اسْتَخَفُّوا بِهَذَيْنِ أَفْسَدَ دُنْيَاهُمْ وَأُخْرَاهُمْ And if you open your tongue by discrediting and insulting those two, then your dunya and your hereafter, both of them go out of the window. You lose both of them. So by honoring the scholars, it means, beloved, my beloved brothers and sisters, as Qurdu we took from it, is that you take matters back to them. They are the ones who have the rights to do so. Going back to the ulama and ahlul ilm, al-rasikhuna fil ilm, who are grounded in knowledge. Especially when the matter is qadaya which are nawazil. Take it back to them. Because prosperity of this world and the hereafter is connected to it. Prosperity of this world and the hereafter is connected to it. And through that, extremism can be battled and extremism can be cured, whether it be extremism in exaggeration or extremism in negligence. I want to conclude and finish there bi idhnillah al kareem. This series is now over bi idhnillah al kareem. Al ghulu fi deen, extremism in the religion. We spoke about all five chapters and five points that we were going to speak about, as we said. Anything which I have said that was wrong, incorrect, mistake, slip of tongue, fault, it's from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.